So now it's time to go and check out all the accessories that Milwaukee are doing. So we're talking drill bits, blades, and all the rest of it. But in the meantime, look, let's check out hand tools too. Sometimes when we um, get a nail that goes wrong or something like that, we get our hacksaw out and you try and get your hacksaw in and hacksaw it off. Or we take the hacksaw blade out and we try to use the hacksaw blade. And anyone know holding a hacksaw blade is not good for your fingers, even with gloves on. So this is quite nice. You can put what looks like the recip saw blade straight into there. In fact, indeed, I think it is exactly the same as the recip saw blade. So this would be amazing in the recip saw box. It folds flat, providing on the length of the blade, obviously. But that, I reckon, is a really innovative little tool there. There's every other range of knives and pens and pencils and scissors and cutters and tin snips. We've got... We use a lot of plastic pipe. So we use plastic pipe for water main. We use plastic pipe for gas main. We use it in plumbing jobs. And this one will pretty much do all of your things up to 63 mil. So this will do waste pipes as well. My plumbing engineer has got different sizes of these. So if you want to make sure your kit's quite concentrated, that one there is going to pretty much cope with most sizes of pipe. So that's also quite nice. Proper, proper strong as well. Just going to introduce you to Adrian. He's going to show you a little t uh, trick with these tape measures. So we're going to go Milwaukee versus Fat Max. Hi, okay, so my name is Adrian and I have the new Milwaukee stud in my hand. We claim that this stud is the most durable tape in the world. Now we have a nylon extrusion coating blade. So we've got a very thick layer of nylon around that blade that makes it very resistant against abrasions. On my right, there is a abrasion test. We've inserted two blades. We've inserted the competitor number one, and then we've inserted the new stud blade. So I'm gonna be sound blasting this blade, starting with the top one, which is our competitor. As you can see, within a few seconds, the coating is going away. I'm going to do this on the start, and I can get as close as I want. That coating is just not going to go away. So here, we are clearly winning against the competition. Thank you. Well, that's a, that's a pretty impressive test, I must say. Um, I'm not going to get my hand in the way of that, that's for sure. Nice one, Adrian. Okay. Cheers, thank thanks very much for that. Bye. So I'm in the accessories section here, and I'm looking at a whole load of stuff. There's stuff you've all seen before. There's blades and there's drill bits of every variety. I've pulled a few bits out to sort of have a chat to you about things that interest me. So I'll bring up the first couple of bits. So what we got here? SDS drill bits. Okay, so what we've got here is we've got the standard one, which is called two. Which you've, which you've all seen before. So that's just a typical SDS point with two sides. And then you've got one times four. So it's the same size bit, but there's four. So um, that's the sort of thing I'm gonna give a go on site. I'd love to see the difference between those two drill bits, purely for, I suppose, speed. And equally, sometimes with an SDS bill, uh, drill as you're drilling in you're doing quite a bit of damage and what I quite like to do is wind the speed down a bit and just gently cut through without smashing the bricks up to pieces so what this is you might say that's really short that'll go in the same size reciprocating saw as this big one here but what it's designed to do is just literally cut into the thickness of plasterboard up to 15 mil thick and the idea of that is let's say you're cutting socket boxes in and you've got cables bunched up behind this is a tool that you can use and not catch the cables or pipes behind. This is a flush cut saw. On the illustration, if I turn out the right way, you can see there's a section of stud work there. And this is something typical that we do. When we run our stud work, we'll run all the sole plates all the way through where the doorways are, keeping the walls straight. And then we go around afterwards and we chop them out. And what this allows us to do, because the body of the saw is running parallel with the bottom of the blade, you can cut directly flat on the floor carbide teeth blades. Now, there's an illustration on here of a steel beam. And I can tell you 
that I took out a Victorian RSJ and it was really heavy gauge steel and the only thing I had, I had no power so I didn't have a 9 inch angle grinder, battery angle grinder on site but I did have a recip saw. So I picked up some of these carbide blades and with one 5 amp power battery and one of these blades I was able to cut all the way through a steel section which was 254 millimeters tall 133 millimeters wide and I'd say the average section thickness was about 10 to 15 mil as it tapered through the web. You're getting, they're claiming 50 times the lifespan out of these over a regular reset blade if you like. So they're worth a look and they'll cut everything, they'll cut pipe, they'll pretty much cut everything, they're pretty indestructive. And the last one I'm going to show you here is a blade which is suitable for lightweight blocks. This may even be suitable, and I'm going to give it a go, for PIR board. Now, I've got this idea with PIR board that I want to set up a reciprocating, say a sawzall saw, in a frame, and I want to be able to pass my PIR boards over the top. So that'll be running in a frame. It's nice and stiff, so it's not going to flex and bend in the PIR, even if we're using a thick PIR. That's going to be on a bench. I'll have a, a timber to run against. I'll be able to move that to my whips and hopefully do lots of repeat cuts with a saws or saw underneath. So I'm going to rig that up. So we're going to give that a go as well. And that'll give me the depth that I'm looking for. If I'm cutting through 120 millimeters of PIR, this is going to do that job. So this is another useful bit of kit. It's a step drill and it go from six to 35 millimeters, ideal for plumbers and electricians, whether you're making sort of holes through tanks, sides of fuse boards, that sort of stuff. I mean, this is the ideal thing. So it's generally into sheet metal or thin metal sections. So that's a useful addition. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to click subscribe and also join us again for some more Milwaukee videos.